one of the first things people often ask when they run a regression is how well does that equation fit the data? In this video, we're going to introduce the concept of the coefficient of determination, or R-squared, which is a measure of the proportion of the variation in the dependent variable that you can explain knowing the independent variable. The observed data point can be written as a predicted data point once you've estimated the equation, plus the error term. So the error term is a difference between the true value that we observe, the y sub i, and the value predicted by a regression equation. With a little bit of algebra, we can create this equation, where we subtract y bar from both sides of this equation, and we square both sides of the equation, and then we add that up over all values of i, from i equals 1 to n. And this is done in the textbook if you want to check the algebraic steps. But what happens here is we end up with this equation, where the left-hand side is the sum of deviations of y from its sample mean. So we're looking at what we call the total sum of squares, which are the total sum of square deviations of y from its mean. On the right-hand side, we have what we call the regression sum of squares, which is a difference between the predicted value and the mean value. So what happens is that first term on the right-hand side is the sum of the squared explain deviations of y from its mean. Because y hat is what we're explaining by the regression line, and that's a part of the variation of y, or the total sum of squares, that can be explained by the equation. What's left over is the error sum of squares, which are the sum of the u hat squares on the right. So what this equation tells us is that the total sum of squared deviations of y from its mean can be decomposed into the proportion of that, which is explained by the regression line, plus the sum of squared error terms, which is the unexplained deviation of y from its mean. Depending on what stats book you may have used, you may have seen ESS and RSS reversed. It's unfortunate, but there is no consensus among all introductory stats books on the notation here. We're going to use RSS to denote the regression sum of squares, but some stats textbooks use this to denote the residual sum of squares. And we're going to use ESS to denote the error sum of squares, but some textbooks use ESS to denote the explained sum of squares. So in those textbooks, the definitions are the opposite of what we're using. The basic concepts, though, remain exactly the same, regardless of how we label this. We will always, in this course, use RSS for the regression sum of squares, which is the amount that's explained, while ESS represents the unexplained, or the error, sum of squares. It doesn't really matter which notation you use, as long as you use it consistently, and we're going to stick with this notation. So here's another way of looking at it. Y hat is the component of Y that's explained by the regression, which is based on the estimated values of beta hat 0 and beta hat 1. And if we look at the point at x sub i, the observed y at that point is y sub i, and we can break up the deviation of y from its mean, which is y bar, into two components. The bottom part is the part that's explained. The difference between the predicted value and the mean value is the explained deviation of y from its mean. The distance by which the point lies above the regression line here would be the unexplained deviation. And what we see here in this case is the total deviation is the sum of the explained deviation plus the unexplained deviation. And essentially what we're doing is we're looking at the sum of those squared deviations. That's a bit of an oversimplification, but it captures that decomposition of the deviation of y from its mean as consisting of some proportion that's explained by the regression plus some amount which is not explained by the regression. Since the total sum of squares equals the regression sum of squares plus the error sum of squares, we define R squared to be the ratio of the regression sum of squares to the total sum of squares. Or with a little algebra, we can write that as 1 minus the error sum of squares over the total sum of squares. However we look at it, R squared has the interpretation of being that proportion of the total variation in the dependent variable that can be explained by the regression model. And notice that value will always be between 0 and 1. If r squared equals 1, that would only occur if we look at the second line of this, if the regression sum of squares equals the total sum of squares, which means the regression explains all the deviation of y from its mean, which means in practice that all the points fall exactly on the line. 
we would end up with an R squared of zero only if the numerator or the explained sum of squares is zero and all of the deviation of y from its mean is unexplained. So what that means in practice is that an R squared of zero means your regression explains none of the variation in y. An R squared of one means it explains all of it. An R squared of 0.9 means that your regression equation is explaining 90% of the deviation of y from its mean. And here's some examples. So here, all the deviations are explained. All the points fall on that line. And that would give you an R squared of 1. An R squared of 0 would occur if there's no pattern, if the regression explains none of the deviations of y from its mean. Now, one thing we have to keep in mind is that the computation of R squared is only computed as RSS over TSS when you include an intercept in the regression. You should always include an intercept term in the regression unless there's some compelling reason not to. If the true value is zero, you can always test for that, and we'll talk about that in the next chapter. But in general, always include that intercept. We'll talk about a few cases much later in the course where it may be appropriate to admit it, but for now, make sure you include that. Without it, the R squared and many other statistics that we'll be talking about won't have any meaning. A few things we have to be careful about. One is that R squared is not something that you can directly use for hypothesis testing. It's not a test statistic in any way. It, we should also note that if there's lots of randomness in the data or the process generating the data, R squared will be low even if the model is correctly specified. We can't really use R squared to evaluate whether your model is good or bad. If you've been taught that before, that generally is not an approach that economists tend to use because we recognize the fact that there are some processes that are truly random. For example, we've talked a little bit in class already about earnings equations. Most earnings equations, while they fit really well and we've got some really nice significant results, most of them only explain 20 to 25% of the total variance in earnings because there's a lot of random factors that influence people's earnings. We should also note that R squared is just a measure of the degree of linear correlation between variables. It does not necessarily imply a causal relationship. 